Good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. My name is Jeremiah, it's J-Man Monero with J-Man Speaks. Welcome back to another episode of 18 Fridays. That's Ask the Experts, Anything Meaningful Fridays. Today we're talking about how to avoid junk food content. What is that all about, right? We're going to have uh, Rachel Height with us here in a moment. We're going to beam her in from outer space because we are so futuristic. Rachel's coming right now. Boom, there she is. Rachel, thank you, thank you so much for being a guest with us today. Um, I'm digging the glasses, by the way. Thanks, thanks. <laughs> Gotta uh, do those blue light glasses, right? Protect our. I've, you know, I've been, <laughs> I've been thinking. I've spent all day looking at three screens. It's like I think I do need some. some yeah, glasses. they really make a huge difference, especially if you're on tech all day. So tell us about junk food content, and then, well, let's start start with this. First, introduce yourself. Where are you from? Okay. What you do? You know, some of the magic that you bring to the table today. So uh, I'm located in Virginia, and I have been working in the housing industry really since 2005. I kind of like fell into it accidentally part time in college, and I've been here ever since. Uh, so many stories so, like this. <laughs> and um, so I actually sold real estate in Virginia and West Virginia for seven years. I specialized in short sales and foreclosures. And during that time, I kept getting a lot of requests from, you know, local associations and places that I worked as far as, hey, you seem like you've got the technology and the marketing stuff down pretty well. Can you help with that? Um, because originally my background was in journalism. So started, you know, really just putting together some basic curriculum for folks. And one of the things that is really important to me with agents is creating content as far as for you guys to learn that's easy to do that you guys feel good about and that actually is consumer first um, where we put the consumer first we focus on the experience of improving the whole process of the real estate transaction and making it so that you feel confident in the stuff that you're doing and we're promoting and raising the bar in the industry I lost your audio. Sometimes it works if you use the on button on your microphone. Um, but I was going to say, I'm going to go ahead and say that sometimes agents only make it about themselves. They're like, me, 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 look at me. I sold something. I saw I'm important. I got an award. So tell us how to, you know, consumer based content. Where do we begin? Um, it, it, we, you know, we have a range of people that will, that'll be watching. So we've got newer agents, we've got experienced agents, we've got tech savvy agents. So let's start with the, with the newer agent, just getting started. Some, many of them, right. If they're younger are already social media savvy. So they're trying to figure out how to tie that into real estate and some may not be social media savvy. Uh, so what, where do we begin? So I always tell everyone to start by, um, making sure that all your intellectual property, that is your name is you know claimed get get your domain get your name and all of that claim because that's how people are going to find you okay that's the number one thing don't worry about coming up with a slogan don't worry about doing kind of this kitschy character stuff um get your name first google yourself see actually what the consumer is going to see if they're researching you if they're going to work with you um so many people want to go out and buy these really expensive marketing packages and things like that but they haven't done the basic work and people will research you know for two hours before they buy a 12 dollar toaster on amazon and straight up you're, got all you're, the reviews. <laughs> yeah yeah and, and they will agonize over it and if you think is it one if you're a brand new agent and they're not checking you out before they they hire you uh to see what is out there about you then then you're very mistaken so number one thing new agents need to do is google themselves see what's out there see if there's any crazy pictures that need to be taken down okay do what I like to call a social media audit. Okay. And if you want some help doing that, you know, you guys can always reach out to me and I have uh, several articles I've written. Um, I'm a regular contributor to Inman news where I talk about like kind of baby stepping out, like things to look for that consumers are looking for. And, you know, we talk about that. I talk a lot about how important Google reviews are. And one of the things that I also recommend for brand new agents who are establishing themselves in branding is to become 
uh, somebody in their local community who reviews restaurants and the things that they're doing. Um, it builds some credibility when you don't know a whole lot about real estate quite yet, but it shows that you're active and involved in your community and builds just a little bit of branding. And Google's very, very rewarding to that. Yeah, what they call it a, a, a Google, I, I am one, just because I take a lot of photos and they're like, would you like to review this place? And I'm like, you know what? I got nothing to do right now. Yeah, I'll review this place yeah. and, I'll, and I'll add mostly, it's like a lot of photos and they'll be like, you are a Google... I don't know, influence Contri something, Contri contributor, contributor, maybe. yeah, yeah, contributor. Some, something like that, where like your your photos have gotten over five hundred thousand views or something crazy like that. So well, let's start with googling yourself, folks. Okay, do it right now if you're watching this live. You're watching on the play. Google yourself, all right, <laughs> um, in the privacy of your own home because it sounds a little, you know. Uh, but also yeah. <laughs> go go to your social media, and it's crazy to me sometimes that new agents. Like, well, I'm an agent now, so you can actually see the moment they became an agent. Yeah, like, <laughs> there's a beginning. And <laughs> I'm very professional now, and I'm like, hold up. Let me – I go like this. I go to your feed. I'm like, you were doing a keg stand two weeks ago, or yeah. you were at this party, or you were at the club, or you were doing – and that's exactly what your clients are going to do, man, before your listing appointment, before your buyer appointment. Um, I can tell you I won over a client actually recently – because he went to my social media and he was like, he's like, man, I was referred to you and another agent and I went to your Facebook. Yeah, I did. I Facebook stalked you. He admitted it. He's like, I Facebook stalked you. And, and I saw like you were a huge Bills fan and you had two kids, two boys, same age as my boys. And I was like, this is it. This is a sign. This is the guy for us. Right. So it was sharing a, a, a part of me, but nothing that I would ever be ashamed of. Right. Right. And, and that's the thing, you know, a lot of people are like, how do you find that balance between, you know, I don't want to lose myself. I don't want to lose my personality. I don't want to lose what makes me special and makes me unique. But at the same time, I'm like, we can totally work with that, but we just need to clean it up and make it professional because you went from being a private citizen to working with the public. Okay. <laughs> you were a private citizen. Before, you were a private citizen. But but and now you have fiduciary duties. It's but it's, it's the such, public. It's such yeah. a good point um, because you are you're a public figure now. Like you really yeah. never take off that hat, especially with you know the recent changes to the code of ethics with hate speech and all of that. Like you can't say whatever you want to say when you want to say it wherever you are because the code of ethics. You know, you never really take off that realtor hat if you're a realtor member. No. And when you take that pledge right now, it's, you know, more important than ever when you're taking your, you know, you're doing orientation and you're taking your NAR pledge that you're going to, you know, do right by the consumer. You know, you, you have to be, you are going to be held accountable. Consumers are going to hold you accountable. And that's something you really need to think about before you even dive into this career. Um, and, I see a lot of seasoned agents right now struggling with the cultural changes and things that are happening. And I, I just feel like we've had a huge, huge shift. And, you know, a lot of people are kind of longing for the days of Coca-Cola and the good old days and things like that. <laughs> good old days. And, and it's just like, you know, we're not trying to say that you have to completely change your personality. We're not trying to take anything away. We're just saying we need to be neutral, protect people, be accountable for what we say, and have a broader perspective because that's what the modern consumer is going to demand of us. Yeah, 100%. Just to give you guys a, a, a quick what, uh, no, homework or task you with something that you need to do today, it's extremely urgent. Um, you go to google.com slash my business and verify your business. Uh, the way they'll do that is they'll send you a piece of mail. It'll have a code on it. And then you put the code in and now you actually exist. And what I mean is it's not your brokerage XYZ Realty. It's the Monero team at XYZ Realty exists at this address. You can have multiple businesses within the brokerage be verified through Google. So right. And, and that's super, super important that you have control over that because, um, and we talked about this the other day, you've got to have your roll and go plan. 
and things and change go, or roll and go plan. And you have to claim your name. You have to have your intellectual property of your business page on Facebook, your Instagram account, uh, your Google business. So that way, if you need to shift with a franchise or a brokerage or you want to open up your brokerage, you own everything. You don't lose the audiences that you spent so many time, hours and you know energy and money to build. You don't lose it because it's yours and you're managing it. Well, let's talk about the reviews because the reviews are so critical. Um, I, I had a, a client that I was working with and they, you know, I recommend three inspectors. I let them pick whoever they want when we actually can get an offer accepted with an inspection. Um, but they, they picked one that I had never heard of, which were always like, oh, my God. Oh, oh no, oh no, right? But they, they did a Google search and it was the only one that had multiple Google reviews. Okay, and this is a brand new guy started three months. The inspection turned out great, but it was a brand new guy started three months ago, under, understood how important that was, and he got the business over. One of the three I recommend is an engineer who does expert testimony. <laughs> okay, that's how like certified this guy is, and he didn't get it because he didn't have any uh, Google reviews to relate. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. It gives you a little more authenticity if people can go on and verify that other people have said, yeah, I've worked with this person. I'm going to say they definitely are an up and up person and they do a great job and they describe their experience. And that has a very high amount of value for the consumer right now because people have very little time and patience and going on to reviews kind of says, okay, I'm screening people. I'm doing my due diligence. Hopefully if I go with this person, uh, the majority of the experiences are positive. I'll have a little less headache from the get-go. All right. I tried to fix my camera that's glitching, but it's not working. It's bothering me like you wouldn't believe. So let's talk about skills or strategies or tactics to get the review, right? I, I, we would love to think that people love us so much that when that transaction closes, they're going to go, Jeremiah, where can we review you? Because we want you so bad. <laughs> And that's never going to be the case. So like, what, what if you found out that's, that's a great way to get those reviews? Okay. So this is one place where agents really hang themselves up. They say they end the transaction and then they send the consumer 15 different places, a whole list of links that they could go review them on and ask them, can you review me in all these places? No, nobody has the time for that. Nobody wants to do that. They're moving into their house. They're done. You know, they, they, they've had a little bit too much quality time with you anyway. They need a little bit of break. Okay. <laughs> let's, let's, let's be real. So what I tell people is in the beginning of the transaction, you identify your consumer's number one social media platform that they participate on. Okay. And you say from the beginning, okay, Rachel has a Gmail address and Gmail has the least restrictive way to send a Google review. Fewer clicks, they've already got a Google account. So when I send them that link, they're probably already linked in because they just reviewed Taco Bell, okay? And they're gonna be able to just give me those stars. If I got the lead off of Zillow, I'm gonna ask them to review me on Zillow. If I got the lead from sweet little lady at church, then I'm gonna ask her if she could write me a little handwritten card reviewing my performance, I might take a picture of that and turn it into a piece of content. You have to make a uh, request a review for the type of consumer that you're working with and the way that's easy and the least restrictive way for them to give you a review. And once you start thinking that way, you're going to have so many different reviews in so many different places. You're not going to know what to do. Rotate it out. DJ Airhorn for you. Some really great tips there. Uh, what, what I will say, depending on if Zillow is a broker in your market, that's the one caveat we want to say that because we understand that Zillow is becoming a broker in many markets throughout the United States. Um, here's one thing that we did. We, we try to do a client appreciation party once a quarter. And when you do th nice things for people, they always want to reciprocate, right? When we could do things in person, we would do you know, our last one was actually a dry, at the drive-in, which was cool because people could stay in their, in their car and be socially distant. But when you, you do these things for, for your clients, if you don't have reviews from them, we would give them a, a raffle ticket for everybody that shows up. And then if you send us a referral that year, you get another one, okay? It, it doesn't cost us any more to give you another ticket, but you feel like now you have a better chance to win at all these things that we're raffling off. We then have computers set up, and for everyone that gives us a review, 
whether it's on, you know, if it is Zillow or Google or Facebook, um, we'll give you another raffle ticket. So we would have, it, we made it super easy. We have them set up. We have the site there. You can just go. And then <laughs> it's funny because like the wife would be like, honey, you do a review too, because we want to get another raffle ticket. <laughs> and it was probably, it's probably the best thing we do to, to, to get reviews in, in, in a nice way because people, you know, when you show up somewhere for an event and you don't have to bring in, you know, they feel obligated to do something for you. Like, you don't want me to bring anything? No, no, no. This is our gift to you. We're taking care of you. We love our clients. Just show up and have a good time. And so and, um, that has worked tremendously for us. Just, just one quick tip. Yeah, I think um, people want to know that you're invested in them, not just during the transaction, but for the long haul. And when you think about being in real estate, having a career in real estate, you're, you know, with every client that you have, you have the potential of having, you know, three, four or five transactions. If, if you're in this for a career, if you're in it for the long haul, um, because people want to move uh, every couple of years, there's usually different changes in their lifestyle or where they want to live or downsizing or upsizing and whatnot. And if you stay in contact with them, you're going to have an opportunity not only to help them on their housing journey, but their friends and family and, and whatnot. And that's the beautiful part about creating strong referral relationships and showing people that you appreciate them. Yeah, it's so important. And I'll tell a quick story. My first year in the business, I, I prospected a FISBO for $59,900. And somebody in my office said, why would you waste your time? That, that person has led to 19 transactions. Okay, over my career, actually nine transactions this year because he had all these rental properties and he's like, I want, I, I want to sell them all. I'm tired of, I'm tired of this. It's time for me to retire. So it's like you, you never know. You, you, you always have to look at every other industry looks at the lifetime, um, the R, the lifetime ROI of a client. We, it's, you know, in real estate, the short, you know, short-sighted agents sometimes will go, this is one transaction, this is what they're worth. But if you look at your entire life, your entire time that you're in real estate, you take care of this client, not just the business they'll do with you, but then also all the referrals that they'll give you, you'll be calling your clients every week and be taking yeah. care of them. Yeah. So one of the things that I really recommend to new agents, especially because they kind of get bogged down with this, um, I want to go sell a house in a certain neighborhood at a certain price point, And, you know, I want the fancy car and I want this and I want it all right away. And I tell them, I was like, don't discount going to work rentals or the smaller transactions and things like that, because you need to practice working with people. And people in the higher price points, you know, again, have a higher set of expectations and things like that that need to be met. And you need to have practice before you go in. People want to know that they're working with experienced people. But I'll tell them 100%. I had clients that same thing. No one would talk to them. No one would help them because they couldn't see the benefit in it for them. And they, you know, I would talk to them and it would be, I had one gentleman I worked with one time, he had $35,000 cash, uh, wanted to retire, was a veteran, but no one would help him because the commission on $35,000 cash is nothing. And they didn't want to spend the time and energy. And he needed a lot of help, a lot of help. We ended up finding him, you know, a single ride trailer on the top of a mountain, but we got it done. And, and I lost money on that transaction for gas and time and energy and just, you know, trying to help this gentleman out. But it was one of the most rewarding things I ever did. Tons of referrals. So appreciative because again, no one would help. And I just think that's a terrible thing. I don't think anyone should feel like no one will help that, that, and to me, that's, that's a shortcoming and that's a failure on our part in the industry. And we have to do everything we can to eliminate those situations. Right. I mean, one of the quotes I always like to live by and talk about, it's like people don't care how much, you know, until they know how much you care. Right. And, and tie that right into social media just uh, to bring it back. What kind of content should we be creating? You know, we get the reviews like it's hard if you're not a creative type, because not all of us. For me, like some days I'm out running. I'm like, oh, shoot, this is oh, I got great idea. You know, my 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 overactive ADHD brain is always going. Sometimes it's hard to 
put it on paper. There's so many things going on in there. But not everybody has that kind of a brain where they can constantly come out with, with ideas. What, what do you think would be, you know, what are some tips for them for content creation? So this is one of the beautiful things about content creation. There's not a one size fits all. Okay. You have to, again, remember how I was talking about how you picked the type of re review request for the consumer to make it easier for them. You need to figure out what is your type of content that's your favorite type of content to create. Okay. And get really, really good at it. So for instance, if you love to make quick Instagram stories and you know that that's something that you're more comfortable with than maybe doing a long form, you know, infographic or something like that, then you need to lean into that. And what I always say is grab your calendar, look at what you've got coming up and then make it a point to put a reminder before that event comes up. How can I turn this into a story? So say for instance, you've got a home inspection, a closing and a new listing appointment. Each one of those pillars, it, it's not a creative point. You know, they're already gonna happen. And you can turn those into educational moments to engage the consumer, explain what you're doing, um, show them how you provide customer service and let them get to know you a little bit. And you've already got three pieces of content already on your calendar that you didn't have to think about. I love that. Um, and I love the pillars of content idea. I, I've, I've talked about that before, but um, I like how you said it. So look at your calendar. And if you don't have a Google calendar, folks, it's time. Okay. <laughs> it's 2021. Damn it. Burn the book, burn it. Uh, but look at your calendar for the month and okay. I have a, just, just like, man, that's so, that's so smart. Look at what you have coming up. I have a showing, I have a closing, I have a walkthrough. Every single one of those can be a teachable moment, can be something you talk about. That's not you going, showing another house. So busy, so busy, so busy. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that, and that's junk food content. Okay. We want to create, um, my, my last article, for Edmund that uh, was put up this week and it was how to create content that inspires confidence in consumers in a frenzied market, okay? And what I'm seeing is a lot of content right now with agents of very stressed out, frazzled people, kind of like, oh my gosh, I just put the house in the market and 25 people are, are already scheduling a showing and, and the intensity of it. And it's almost like they're, whipping things up into a frenzy even more. Consumers are not going to be inspired or feel confident in that. And if we want to try to fix our inventory problem across the country, we have to offer solutions and say, hey, we're going to calmly walk you through this. It may take us a little bit longer to find you a property, but we're going to get you there and you're, you're going to be OK. And one of the examples I used in my article is I said, you know, I feel like right now with transaction management, um, and I'm going to date myself here, but remember on the family vacation movie, like what the station wagon looked like at the beginning ah. of the movie and what the station wagon uh, looked like at totally. the end of the movie. Lampoons. So yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So beginning of the transaction, your station wagon's nice and new, and we're going to make it to Wally world, but things are going to fall off and be a little bit. We're going to make process. it to Wally world. Yeah. 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 So, and that's what I feel like transaction management is right now. And I feel like a lot of agents, because they're so busy, they're so overwhelmed, they're not taking care of themselves. They're not doing the things that they need to do. So they, when they pick up the phone, they're calm, cool, and collected. Um, you know, that, you know, they're just running the consumer through the entire transaction. And, you know, the consumer's getting beat up the entire way. And what happens when that, when we have these really fast market conditions is when that consumer is finally sitting in that house, it, they're like, oh my gosh, I don't even know if I wanted this house to begin with. We just got into a bidding war and here I am. And they actually have to live there now. And, um, and they bought at the top of the market and they're, they're stuck with it. Yeah, man, that is such a good analogy. Cause it's like when you have agents that are freaking out, it's, it's like when Chevy Chase gets there and Wally world is closed and he's like, Damn oh, yeah. it. No. <laughs> we, we are going into this yeah. world right now. That's an issue that you have just before closing. And you're like, I've worked this hard. We've done, you know, we wrote, I wrote 17 offers for these clients. We had an issue mm -hmm. with the appraisal. We took care of that. And then you bought furniture and then we did, you know, and it's like going through all these, oh man, su such a good analogy. But well, let me just give a quick shout out to, um, we got, we're all over the United States right now. We got Anita Bryan 
in uh, Cortland, Ithaca. Thanks for watching. We got Billy Parrott in Billings, Montana. We got Leticia Edwards in Chi-Town, Chicago. And then Chris Gerhardt in San Antonio, Texas. But Chris was originally from Rochester, New York. I remember you, Chris. Um, San Antonio is a, a, a great place. I love the river walk there. Uh, and then Anita Bryan says, I managed seven Google calendars. Seven? Damn. I, I, I thought I was a lot. I think I have three. Um, I don't manage our personal one because my wife does. Uh, but seven Google calendars. Hey, whatever you got to do to keep it organized. You guys, every morning, visually, when you could wake up. You know, this is I wore this T-shirt, but if you follow me, that's a hashtag I use every day. Winning the wake up. When you start to feel overwhelmed, because there's days where I'm like, dude, I missed something today. It's so crazy. I must have missed something. And that's where like, I feel so much better to wake up early, do something active to get my mind going, and then start my workday early so that I can get everything in order and stay organized. Because the chaos and the mayhem comes a lot of times from disorganization. Right, not not having everything in order, not working with a with a, you know, having a great team throughout the transaction, whether that's title company, attorney, mortgage, everything, so that you guys all kind of collaborate and work so so well together, uh, to make sure that yo know, man, you get to Wally World and Wally's open and everybody's happy. They don't have to yeah, <laughs> could not have the security guard to go on the ride. Uh, <laughs> we got. Who else we have? Oh, we got Renita Books also from Houston, Texas. So we're actually covering all, all of the United States. And then we got Jeffrey Scott Stanton from the NYC. Great to great to to see you. I like to say seeing people, but it's I'm seeing your your names, guys. We miss you. We're gonna do some in person events soon. Uh, we'd like to keep it right around thirty minutes. Anything else, Rachel? You want to say like give them like uh, one last nugget that they can pull from to create content today. Let's make them create something today. That's great. Okay. So, you know, I challenge you guys to look at your calendars and whether it's you have a home inspection, whether you have a lunch with a friend coming up, whether you know you're driving to see a family member and you know you're going to go past a park or a view or something like that. Look at, you know, look at your personal calendar too for content inspiration, because we need to sprinkle in some of the, again, the personal content so people can know you and know that you're an authentic person and that you're involved in your community. So look at that stuff. I challenge you to go become a Google contributor. Super easy to do. And Google will remind you to do it. Make these quick, quick changes. And then the one last thing I'll leave you guys with is I want you guys to know that the majority of you are doing a great job. Um, you know, we have been working in crazy market conditions for several, several months right now. And consumers are extremely demanding and it's exhausting. Okay. And it's no fun to get thrown under the bus and we get thrown under the bus a lot, but, um, you know, take time to take care of yourselves, gather yourselves, um, take some time for yourself, take care of yourself so you can be calm, cool, collected, and you are going to do that much more business. Thank you so much. Let's give you a round of applause. Hold on. Let me get it out of here. Ba -doo -ba -doo. So do that. Put it in your calendar. For me, when I get really busy, I forget to do videos. Not forget. I just don't do the videos because I'm so busy. And so when I put it in my calendar, we have an operations manager here. I would say she would put in my calendar. I have to interview this restaurant on Monday at three. Well, it's in my calendar now. I'm not going to move it and it's going to happen. So putting it in there to create the content. Uh, if you want to share it with myself or with Rachel, and again, just just hit us up if if you want to. We'll we'll put Rachel's uh, all of her social media information or contact information in the comments, so you can reach out to her. But we're more than happy to audit your social media, give you tips and tricks of how you can be better, because that's what we're here for. Uh, but we're gonna close out with the A Team theme because it's Ask the Experts Anything Meaningful Friday. Yeah, there it is. Here we go. I love it when a plan comes together, folks. Have a great week, folks. We'll see you next week. We'll be talking about some video.